This is a review of the first half of Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. Before I get into analysis, I'm going to speak in a spoiler-free fashion for those of you who are still trying to decide whether or not you want to watch it, and I'll let you know when I'm going to spoil the finale. I enjoy this show, but I think it has the problem of following a show that I really adored, which was Fate Zero. I'm man enough to admit that my crazy expectations are making me a particularly harsh judge on this show, and I hate that I'm like that. Of course, the show does have some flaws, like some pacing issues and some characters who are pretty transparently just plot devices. But that being said, most of it is really good. The animation and music are beautiful, and when the show does focus on an action sequence, then those are done so well it's mesmerizing. It manages to be shocking and surprising and also very thought-provoking. Sometimes the character building moments or the comic relief moments feel very drawn out, like they're just trying to fulfill a certain amount of time. And also, the characters betray each other and then trust each other at kind of the drop of a hat just for the sake of a dramatic moment. We get it. Shiro is an awkward teenage boy surrounded by girls. Next scene! But then a fight starts, and then you feel a little bit guilty about ever complaining about anything, because, damn it, they're epic. Episode by episode can be a little bit hit or miss, depending on what the goal for that episode is. But I think that, on the whole, it's a very quality show. The build-up to the finale was really good, but the finale itself, as a whole, was emotionally charged well enough, but um, a bit underwhelming in every other aspect. But now I'm going to spoil the finale itself, so if you haven't seen up until episode 12, then do not watch any further in this video because you will be spoiled. I honestly felt like episode 12 would have been a fantastically paced, regularly length episode. But then someone at the very last minute broke the news that Guys, it's gotta be a double episode, you gotta stretch it out. This resulted in everything feeling very sluggish, and we were spending too long on each moment. There was no part of it that I would take out. I would just trim it all. It was nice to show the little excursion with Rin, Shiro, and Saber, because it reinforced this relationship that made it that much more emotional when they got all separated. But it got gratuitously long, and it felt more like padding, and wasn't adding anything new to the story. And that's the general vibe I got from pretty much all the scenes in the finale, that I felt like it would have been a really good 22 minute episode, but it had to be 44 minutes. On a positive note, they've really set up for a really great start for the second half of the series. I do wish that I could force the show a little off to the left a bit, because the focus is too much on the non-magic and non-fighting aspects. Quiet scenes, or even quiet episodes, are important to battle animes in order to establish characters and to make us connect to not only the protagonists but the antagonists as well. But that shouldn't come at the expense of what we're all here to see. Because let's face it, we want to see the heroes of history and legend fight each other with magic. There's way too much time spent sitting around the dinner table making fun of Shiro, and I, I just don't want to see another scene like that. So the series is going to take a break until April, and so for now, I'll just leave it at that. Despite how negative I seem, it's only because my expectations are so high, and I am very excited to watch the second half. I'll see you next time. Bye! Before I get...